Clearly there's been a lot of press about big data recently. And uh, you know, what is big data? Big data is uh, it's really just the observation that uh, uh, there's a lot more information out there than there used to be. And there's a lot of ways you can get insight out of it by applying predictive techniques to it. And because of these examples, businesses now understand that big data is an important strategic asset for them. But it's, it's a tricky kind of asset because you know, the question is, how do you actually monetize it? Where do you get the value from big data? Well, for us, that's actually become our mission. Our mission is to basically find ways to harness big data for B2B sales. And we do that uh, by making sure that the sales reps are informed, that they're targeting the right customers, and that they're going to those customers in the most effective way. And our product is basically a platform for doing just that. Okay, so just very briefly about us. Founded in 2006 with uh, 120 employees. We are uh, global at this point. We have uh, offices in several cities here in the US and in China. We've been recognized in the press as uh, uh, basically bringing big data to uh, sales. Adoption of several thousand sales professionals with over 40 deployments worldwide. And we consistently have been able to deliver value uh, to those sales professionals and improve their performance over what they've been doing before. So just to give you a flavor of some of the kinds of big data that are useful in sales context, uh, I just want to go over a few examples. Partly to give you a sense of, you know, in, in many cases these things can be pretty darn specific. So for example, there is information that's now available uh, at the level of U.S. corporations of how much they're uh, they're exporting, right? For certain types of salespeople, that can be very valuable. There's also a lot of information out there now from Twitter. Organizations talk about their people, they talk about their products. Uh, people within organizations talk about what they're looking for. All that kind of stuff can be gold for salespeople trying to stay up to date on uh, what's going on with their customers. Even more basic things can be valuable too. Just Analyzing websites to look and see who's taking credit cards, what type of credit cards, that kind of thing. If you have to cover a thousand accounts, it's good to know something about their business. You know, how focused are they on retail, on e-commerce, etc. And then finally, there's other other sources, for example, from uh, the Department of Defense. You know, that give you a sense of uh, which companies uh, are actually able to deliver services to them. But part of the challenge is that all this data is out there. Uh, it can be very difficult for sales reps to, to find and synthesize all this. So why does sales need big data? Well, one of the casualties of the downturn has been that a lot of the administrative support that salespeople used to have has been cut, and they've been asked to do more with less. So that's increased the uh, amount of effort they've had to put into administrative activities. Also, because all this information is out there, the bar has gone up. Customers are expecting that sales professionals who are serving them know what's going on because it's out there. So they have to prepare both in terms of you know, better understanding the relationship their organization has with the customer, as well as looking to uh, information that may be available from social networking sites, from uh, uh, new sources of data, and so on. What this adds up to is a decrease in selling time. It's been estimated that it's maybe 25% less than it was 10 years ago. And that has a big impact on uh, the amount you can sell, obviously, if you can't be out there selling. And the primary tool for salespeople, CRM, is not really designed to handle big data. At the time CRM really sort of caught on, 
the primary types of information that were being tracked were basically forecasts and you know just your product transaction history. Today, there's much broader visibility within most organizations. Uh, you know, things have been added to the list, including you know technologies like marketing automation. So now you have a much better sense of who in an organization is interacting with your website. Uh, you know what types of campaigns they're interested in. All that sort of thing didn't really exist ten years ago. In addition, external information about companies has also exploded. It used to be that it was pretty much just firmographic information and credit scores, but today there's a wealth of sources that can be used to provide insight into what's going on in an organization, uh, what their objectives are, how they're thinking about things. And so now, sales professionals spend a lot of their time just being integrators of all this stuff, right? Mining what's in their organization, mining external sites, and it's been estimated that, again, they spend you know, uh, their time in such a way that they're going to maybe 15 sources uh, before they can actually make a call with a customer. Okay. So where can big data influence sales? The easiest way to see this is to look across the sales pipeline and ask, you know, what are some of the ways that uh, uh, the big data can have an impact, a meaningful impact? So at the beginning of the sales funnel, you have to have leads, right? You have to have somewhere to go. And the obvious thing to do is to, you know, have some way of prioritizing those leads. Prior to using any kind of big data approach, you know, the state of the art was basically to apply a decision rule. Look to see maybe what the title of the contact is, you know, look to see what they're interested in, what industry they're in, come up with some sort of point-based system for that, and use that as a way of deciding which leads you're going to follow up on. Well, what's new is that now you have so much other information, you can actually build predictive models, which is what everybody here is all about, right? So now you have the opportunity to actually use a, a breadth of information that may not be present initially when you get the lead to go out and figure out how you should respond to it. Often what happens when leads come into an organization is that there'll be teams that'll work uh, specifically just to set up appointments so that other teams can then follow up with the sales process. So that's, a, that's this process of setting up some sort of call. So before, this process usually worked with a relatively simple rule. Hey, if we call somebody three times and they don't respond, move on to the next one. Not, not really taking into account how valuable they might be, what it might cost to get the next lead, all those types of things. Now that you can actually build a model for it, you can use dynamic programming, right? A technique from uh, operations research where you marry up, you know, essentially a, a model for what the return is with your model for what the, the probabilities of different actions are. Assuming you get the call, you want to talk to the customer and identify opportunities. Again, before you've had access to this wealth of context, you follow basically a script. Talk about you know, your product, what does it do. Now, you have the opportunity to talk about the context. What are you, Mr. Customer, trying to do? Right? We have all kinds of indicators of that by looking at your, at your footprint that's out there, your digital footprint. Finally, used to be about, hey, let's close the deal and move on. Take the order. Right? We're now in an era where it's possible to continue to engage with your customers with content that's relevant for them. Because you have a much better sense of, A, what's working, because you can measure it, uh, and B, what their interests are. That's going to position you better for the next sale. So I'll spend just a minute talking about this case because uh, I think it's pretty interesting. The whole idea of what do you do when you're trying to set up set up a call? Imagine yourself as at, you know as one of these uh, sales professionals, and basically you have a choice. You can either keep following up on the leads that you've got on your plate. You can go get new leads. Or you can go back to leads that you know you might have talked to three months, six months, or a year ago. 
that's a pretty complicated set of decisions to make, especially if you're going to call, you know, order of maybe 100 people in a given day. So what's it look like when you start to view it through an analytic lens? Well, the key difference is that it's possible to score all these leads in all those different buckets, right? The ones you're recycling, the ones that are new, uh, and the ones you're currently following up on by looking to see exactly you know, where it is in the life cycle and building a model for it. Once you have a model, you can then decide, okay, here's the ones we're not going to focus on. So you filter those out. But all the rest of them, you create a task, you move it through the, uh, uh, through the sales system, have them log their calls, and then you go back and add new leads in to make up for the ones that you're now dropping off based upon the results of what's happened. So by executing this kind of process, you can really optimize the whole system by having a model of, of, of basically uh, the dynamics. Okay, so the key part of that solution is to be able to actually use predictions to improve the performance. So in this chart, basically, it's just an indicator of like, for the entire prospect universe that our customer is working with, they had something like a 3% conversion rate. And if you were to map out what the conversion rate would need to be for this activity, activity to be profitable after the first year, it came in just below that. So in other words, through all their prospecting effort, they basically didn't get any return with those customers for the first year. It's pretty disappointing, but it's true. Prospecting is very difficult. And anything you can do makes a big difference. So the first step was to build a model. But the trick with building a model in this domain is that there are thousands of attributes out there when you start to mine big data. And one of the key techniques that, that's used is to actually filter those attributes based on whether or not they're actually telling you something new. So applying basically mutual information you can identify which of the attributes matter and which ones don't and get to something that's uh, much more workable for the analytic models. The result is that you can narrow down that prospect universe, in this case, to something like half of the prospects and get an increase of between 30 and 40 percent in the conversion rates, which is great because it moves you well above that line of marginal, productivity, or marginal profitability. And when you go out and actually do this, which, which we did with this customer, by dividing the world up into a test group and a control group, what you find is that for the segments that are identified as you know, high or medium probability compared to the low probability segments, there's a pretty significant difference in the overall conversion rate. And there's a big difference relative to what you would get uh, in the control group. So 40% improvement over the control group, and then 90% left between the, the best and the worst. Okay. So how does this actually look in real life? Uh, for ADP, which is one of our customers, they looked across the spectrum of their selling activities because they concluded that with their, their business, where they're targeting you know, literally thousands of accounts each year for their HR services, because uh, pretty much everybody needs HR if you have people. Their sales reps had on average a thousand accounts that they were covering. And so it was just not possible for them to be up to speed on all of those different details about them. So they were able to deploy our solution and use it to help their, help their um, sales professionals really focus on the right accounts and deliver to those accounts the right uh, the right message based upon the context for the customer. And the results speak for themselves. Those sales professionals were able to improve their productivity and the number of opportunities they generated significantly over the baseline. And they now recognize that not only is this an asset, right, 
but it's one that actually contributes directly to the top line in this case for them.